So you can hear it, right? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's, first of all, it sounds, it sounds good because it's a big motor and you can almost have that sort of big block sound, right? I can tell. I, in the yard, I can, I can feel it going blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's shaky a little bit. That's with some choke on and I lowered the RPM and I still have plenty of power. So this is an, an, a sound example of the way it's running right now before we put the other carburetor on. And we can tell without choke, it'll stumble, it can fall, it will, might even shut off. I tried that. Um, I'm not going to show it now. Um, let me see what I want to do. Maybe I'll show it after we do the next test with it. But now the, it's actually running a little bit better because, you know, we went over the motor and it's been neglected and we had a lot of stuff to do to the engine as well. Um, but we can see she's coming back. She sounds like she's running pretty good, even considering. Let me get to the next step. Uh, we're going to do sort of a high pressure test on the underbody. And then maybe I'll show you uh, it falling on its face then. Let's get it started, and what I'll probably do is pull the throttle down, or excuse me, put the throttle up too, and we'll try removing the choke, and I'll just squirt, you know, with the handle a few times, and you'll see, and then we'll we'll shoot the underbody of these mowers. Let's just give it a, a start. The power to scour. I got the HIPAA carburetor. All right, so we're going to find out in a little bit. We're going to get started on that. And for those of you that, depending, I guess depending on also how I set up the video, right, how I release it, it may just be a standalone. We're going to be putting a HIPAA carburetor, replacing the HIPAA carburetor that's on here, which is different, right? It's for the, just to kind of catch up to speed. Craftsman. Uh, engine, right? This is a Briggs 190cc engine. Um, these are really nice motors. The overhead valve. This is uh, this is this is like their light commercial engine, light commercial residential kind of application. Uh, these are good motors. I like these, and this is actually an older variant, and that's why we're going to be playing around with this design carburetor. What's on here right now, including the air clean assembly is what I took off of a slightly newer motor, same motor, but it's like a newer outfit, you know, or fit out or fitment. It doesn't run right, it needs to be tuned. But I I asked him, I'm like, well, why don't we just get, let's see, let's see if we can get something like similar or a replacement version uh, to the original equipment design on this. And we're gonna go back to, um, it uses a, like a standard Briggs filter, right? And I even get, we'll, we'll look at everything. I even get the pre-filter in the box. Plus a filter and a plug, right? A, a fuel filter and a switch, which this one, uh, we already have that in there. I don't know about <clears throat> putting a fuel filter in. There's really not a, really no room. You could probably squeeze one in. I don't think we're going to do that here. Keep the fuel clean. I pour through a paint filter. 
so I've been replatforming these, going with platforms that I personally like. I just to catch you guys up for those that you don't know. Like I said, if you're looking at this for the first time and you haven't looked at the file, the project, depending on how it released. This is an older frame I went over last year. I like this frame. It's got these little push button things here so you can lift the handle up and turn around the other way. It's great for storage, especially in the winter. It's a bigger frame overall. It's got a lot of room in here for different pump configurations and engine setups. And I just re-drilled it and mounted all of this that you see here. I did that uh, the other day. Um, and then the same thing with the red one that's over there that I'm going to be selling. That's a, that's a sort of separate issue. Uh, it took a similar frame, a little bit less, it's been more, a little bit more compact, so there's not as much room, but I mounted a Honda motor to it and moved things around so I could fit a similar pump. And you can get any kind of pump. And that's the concept, is to kind of get away from the original Craftsman frame for this, which we'll get a peek at and lay out, only allowed for this pump. When I tried to put another pump on it, it, it that with the connections on the other side, you can't get to anything. So what most of these companies do is they take parts like this, this cool motor. They put maybe a Craftsman label on it, but it's a Briggs 190cc. This is an Anna V Reverbery or an AR pump. Uh, I got a General over there. And then they just marry all this stuff together and drill everything out. Uh, these wheels are the no flats. What was on here was plastic wheels. Um, one blew out. Uh, they got these nice collars on the end with a set screw, so it's easy to get on and off. I took the no flat wheels from that Craftsman frame and put them on here. Right. Now I don't have to worry about it even, uh, ever going flat. And my thinking is I kind of wanted to keep this one <clears throat> because of the way the layout is. Um, I can easily put any engine or any pump because I do this you know, stuff frequently and I don't want to have to re-drill every time or whatever. I just, it'd be nice to be able to like, oh, a pump. Uh, I just got a machine, another machine. And if there's something wrong with the motor, which it probably is, and I'll put up a few picks here, it needs work, right? It's a Generac. We need, we're going to be cleaning that this week and going over it as well. Uh, but if the motor doesn't run or I can't get it to run or something's wrong and I just want to test the pump, um, I can pull this pump off, throw that pump on. I know it's going to fit. Nothing should be in the way and I should be good to go. So I get a test platform out of this as well as a good working machine. So let's get started on this one. Um, like I said, all of this assembly here is all belongs to that other machine. We're going to dig out the correct assembly and pick up whatever we're missing, for hopefully from my inventory. And we're going to get this carburetor on there. We're not going to tune there anything. We're going to put it on. We're going to test it and see what it does. Um, I will put some footage in on this of the, the way it previously ran. Um, I was able to get the machine to run with a bit of choke and a little bit of dialing in with the choke and RPM. And, uh, and it ran okay like that, but that's that's not what you want, right? That's not the correct way to go about doing it. So let's get started on this project. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, so the first things, fellas, that I want to kind of go through is I opened up the carburetor, and I recommend, I don't care who where you get it from, even if it's factory, like a replacement. Factory replacement call for this application is about $100, somewhere in that range. So this is considerably less money. It doesn't matter, right? You got to go in there and take a peek. Make sure there's no junk in here that looks like it's set correct. Um, this is 13 millimeter nut. So um, that's interesting. It's like probably full metric. And just a good overall sort of look-see. We're going to have to put the choke thing in. So I just measured the jet with my one of my little drills. And it falls between two numbers. So just so we know, starting off. Uh, what fits in there is a 0.0292, so 292 thousandths. And I tried the 0.031, and it won't fit. So it's right between, okay? And that's as close as I can get it. And that's for our reference. So if we see it's running too rich, about 031 for like a 190cc lawnmower application, that's about as large as I would ever want to go. I generally don't go beyond that. And again, that's for here on Long Island. This is sea level. Like, we're a couple of feet above sea level. All right? So, you know, keep that in mind. Everything looks good in here. We'll just test to see if it's sealing. In a minute, I'm going to put a little bit of my sweetener on it. Um, this is just uh, my tranny fluid mix. And then some on this seal. These seals that they come with, these things, then I don't find them to be as nice as the factory. They tend not to seal up. Um... After you remove them and put them on, 
sometimes right away, sometimes a few times, right? That's just an observation. It's not always the case, but just be mindful of that. So if you see a leak, it could be if you have an old gasket or a gasket from your old carburetor, um, don't bork it because you might need it. Um, I think just because of the type of material that they're using, everybody seems to be using it now, so I'm not going to blame HIPAA for that. Um, that's like a standard thing, and I'm just not a fan of it. Tighten it up. No, don't over tighten it. There we go. That's it. All right, now let's just take a quick peek at what's in the kit before we get started, and then we'll go over to the machine. So here is the gaskets that you're going to be needing. You got your filter and your pre-filter, right? It might be a little overexposed. Let me, let me just notch it down a little bit. You want it bright enough so you can see, but at the same time, you get shiny objects and white things. So we got a plug. We'll pop the plug in. I already put a new switch in when I was working on the motor. We're not going to be able to fit that. You get a couple of nice hose clamps to, appropriate for this size. Carburetor, your filter, and then this is the hole. When we pull the other carburetor off and... We go to do all of this then, but this should be the correct choke lever, okay? Um, I say should because it looked like in the picture it was the right one. Um, do I have the other? Yeah, yeah, let me show you. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So you got different possibilities. You got your gaskets, okay, that you're going to be needing. You got two different choke blades. You got that little seal which is nice that you put a little, just a little bit of oil on. You get some fresh bolts in case they're, you know, this is just another adapter. Some of these have, they're longer. So this is the factory cob and it probably, you know, there's, there's no way, there's no really good way that I could ever say to you that trying to fix a carb like this is going to work. It's so jammed up with, the alcohol got in it and really messed it up. Um, if you soak it, you might get these two gaskets off. And then, of course, this is the factory choke setup. And they look real close. Okay. So, but in some cases with some of these carbs, you need to rescue this. So, you, and they break. So, you, you know, don't throw this out, right? You might want to hold on to that for yourself. And if we soak it, we might be able to get this gasket off. So, I'll soak it another time and rescue that stuff. And then, of course, this is the plate, the actual plate that's not on there, but this is what holds in our gasket. Okay. So, and I don't have the cover, but the cover is a standard brakes cover off of a regular machine, you know, like a lawnmower. So I think we're good to go. Then there's this spacer. Okay. This is the spacer for it. Uh, and some of the correct bolts because it's a different bolt up. This bolt up is different. This bolt up is for the other machine. You'll see when we go to do it. And this hose is for the machine we're going to be working on. So I swapped some things. I co-mingled. That's a big word. All right. Just to try to get it running so I could use it. Um, for those of you who don't know that when I picked this machine up, when I got it, um, it was a mess. And um, it was discarded. It was just filthy. It was missing a whole bunch of things. So to get everything running, um, I kind of co-mingled some parts so I could get it going and bring it out for a test and see if we have something that's worthy of uh, putting, you know, buying a wand and a hose or whatever. But I almost forgot, before we go any further, I just took a piece of hose, right? So this is the normal operational uh, installation position. When we're blowing it, we should get flow. You may not hear it, but I hear it. And we'll turn it upside down and just blow. Yep, it's sealing up. So just quick, right? You could do it with a vacuum a pump and you could measure it and check to see if it blows off at a certain point and you could yes you can do all of that but fellas we just want a good quick overall view to see what's going on make sure everything's going okay this is working the float seems to be functioning and for all intents and purposes right now i think we're ready to go forward <clears throat> now we could have tuned what's here but i thought it would be better uh, to get the correct piece for this and do it the right way and save this over, you know, put it back later on off camera. I'll put this back on that other motor so I don't lose all the bits and bobs. Um, and you could tell it's, it's not the same thing. Okay. 
eight millimeter socket or, or equivalent. So these are different. See, this is for the other motor. Okay. So be mindful. They like, they changed stuff. All right. So there's a gasket on here. Okay. It's like a standard Briggs gasket, just you know for push prime or whatever. And then this comes out. So put a little lubricant on that, and you'll see it'll come right out. I put a little lubricant on it when I put it in. It's just shoved in there. So this is the style, right, that holds on that assembly. And the bolts that they gave us, which is good because I don't even know if I have them, um, they're going to hold on this assembly, but it's different, right, because it's, see, the swing arm is, everything is different. This is all different, so it belongs with that assembly. And now we got to throw the switch. I should have ran it dry, but I didn't. Which way does the switch go? Yeah, this one's sticky, this switch. That one's difficult to turn, so I actually have to turn it with a pair of pliers because my weak hands. All right, so this is a Torx style head. You've got both 3 8 and Torx. And sometimes it's nice to have something like this where you can just kind of get in there and, and peel out. Um, let's pull this one off before I go any further. Let's give it a twist. I put a little lubricant on it, but it should come right up. You're going to get me one of them hose plier things. There we go. Mm -hmm. Let's poke it out of our way. I actually put a new line on there, so... <clears throat> All that's fresh. The switch is fresh. The tank is cleaned out. It's all in a different episode, I think. When I went over this motor the first time to get it to go. Now, this spacer, the phenolic spacer or plastic spacer, that's the same. And these are the bolts for it. We already have a gasket in it, so we shouldn't have to fuss with it. You can glue some of this on. High tech. Um, or a simple gasket seal. Don't use, see if I can get this off. This is the little spring. You need that spring. If I have enough nails to do it. I also have a little tweezer thing that I can use. And this just comes right off like that, fellas. Just like that. Right. How's that again, Arch? Yeah, it's, it's tight. It's good. Because that this is a new carburetor. And it's basically the same carburetor. We'll take a peek in here in a minute. But it's a little bit different, okay? It's just, it's designed for the other model. And we'll get in there, we'll peek inside there in a little bit. So these, this kind of like is captive. It holds the gasket for you, which is kind of neat. That's kind of a neat thing. So we don't need to replace the gaskets on that because I already kind of was in there and it, those are the gaskets from the other HIPAA carburetor. Now, <clears throat> is your opportunity just to check it. Okay, and we're gonna go back over. Everything looks good, everything fits on, no problem. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put on the choke system on it. And let's go over to the, uh, the, the bench and take a closer look at that. And just so we can get a like, top-down view and see how to install it. All right, so here we are. Okay, so we know. Let's take a look at the old cob. And this one has, can you see it? See the design? Or the happy face design. And let's see, we got this guy. All right, yeah, so this has like two holes in it. And that's the difference, all right? And it kind of goes this way with the little teats, the little indents. We'll face them up. We'll kind of match up what we have, put that in there. Hold on, we got to put the little fuzzy thing in. Let me shut that off. All right, so with the little indents up, facing upwards, sort of holding it like this. And it wants to go like that. And we'll try to get it in a position to where we can get it in, too. And it should be able just to slide it right in. Just kind of line up everything by eye. 
and it's got to go in further and she got to go in all the way that's it there we go think that looks correct okay so that's the correct one here hey okay. I'm happy these are for different designs so they give you that slightly different designs I've seen that too it's got some got some junk in there hold on since I already ran this one fellas we're gonna measure it and see okay because it's basically the same ah. let me get all this fuel out out of the way first because it stinks we'll be back and then we'll peek at it oh there's some junk in there could have been sitting from the last time I used yeah oh you guys see that is that fuzzy stuff hey it's that crystalline junk fuel the alcohol right away um, brief history you can see it was staining the top of of the float a little bit well, let, me, let me get rid of this stuff but I could have got up in it in the in the carburetor and get rid of some of this it's starting to gel and gum and get crystalline and clean this up we'll put my tranny fluid mix in here this is why like I ran this motor out like a year ago or something and let the fuel kind of go out of it and I put it up on the shelf we kind of did this motor it was built from two um, one was really destroyed and the other one I kind of stole parts and again co-mingled to make one motor run and I ran it on the bench and you know this was new carburetor and I said that we needed to tune it and it was a new carburetor at the time and then whatever fuel residue sat in there over the course of a year I guess it's been at least All right we'll, we'll clean that again later but we got the junk out of it All right that's what it does that's the problem that we have today. It's not the carburetor so much as it's the fuel. I right, just put a little compressed air on it. Yeah, and even the seal, right? It's getting a little bit borked. Let's put a little bit of my tranny fluid mix on that seal. That'll refresh it. Believe me, I've actually taken gaskets that were okay, but that got blowed out a little. Don't put any on these gaskets. Don't. If you want to wash like gaskets and stuff, and something tranny fluid with gasoline or two stroke things like that you can't get any gum out on them you know never put uh mix, mix over at mix mowers he does like a lot of he likes uh wd because it well it makes sense it's first of all it's safe it doesn't stink you can get it on your hands it doesn't clean as well you know but there's trade-offs right to everything let's stick our pokey thing in there and let's see what we get so I'm going to start off with an 028. All right, 028 fits. It's getting it's a little tight. And now we're going to go with the 0292, which is where we are with the other carburetor. And that, that fits a little tight. Okay, so it's probably the same jet size, and we're going to follow up with, I think this, I said this was the 031. Hold on. And this should not fit. It's the 031. Yeah, that doesn't fit. Okay, so basically the same jetting. But you can see it's just, it's basically the same. It just sets up a little bit differently. All right, now I can't, I can't attest to anything else that might be different. The bore looks the same. It's the same kind of setup. It just has a different choke mechanism on it. You know, just for the handle-wise. Everything else looks okay. So I like these carburetors. All right, now we're going we're gonna to work with this guy. We're going to, let me put it together and put it aside. I'm going to put... Again, my tranny fluid mix on some of this. That'll keep it nice. You wipe it up, put it all in there. This will keep the seals good and keep things from rotting because this is going to go on the shelf. And we're going to put it back on that motor. 
But maybe it'll give you a little peek at it. Depends upon how long the, the, uh, the video runs. Because we do have to test this uh, and possibly tune it. And remember, we got to do a, a real test, which is because this has got a, a pump on it, a water pump on it, right? We can't run the engine really without water going through it. At that point, we might as well do a full wash test, like, a, you know, an actual test. I'm just going to snug this up because we're gonna, probably going to be back in here. Uh, whenever I go to use that motor or if I put this carb on another motor or whatever application, I do have another application coming up. We may need another carburetor. I got that other uh, uh, pressure washer to do. Basically, same setup, slightly different pump. All right. Let's install that. All right, all we need to do is slide the carburetor on the hook. The hardest part, all right, just give it a pull out against the um, governor. The hardest part's going to be just kind of getting that spring on. And I got it on. And this is how easy it is, fellas, right? The gasket's already there. It's captive. I put a little bit of no seize on the threads. Snug it up. A little bit at a time. If you want, that makes life a little bit easier, right? We could, we could probably just put a chick on it. A small stubby ratchet. All right, good. Oh, is that money calling? Let's find out. Just gonna put a little bit of my training fluid mix in the hole. It helps us to slide it down a little easier. I put my clamp back and what I'm going to do now, I'll get you in close in a minute. I'm going to pop the plug and we're going to put their plug in. I'll check the gap and I wanted about 30,000 so I'll check it and I'll put a little, make sure it's the same and I'll put a little bit of no seize on it. I'll pop that in. And I'll get you in close. Now, we're not putting the rest of it on yet because when we do our full test, all right, it may be that we need to drill the jet. Um, sometimes you have to tune these carburetors. Applications vary slightly. So we're going to leave this just the way it is right now. Everything is good to go. That's how easy it is. And then when we field test, if it, you know, if it lights off and everything is good, great. If not, well, what I might do is right now is let's turn the fuel on. I want to check to make sure I have fuel in it. And we'll let it sit. We're going to check for leaks as it fills up. We may start it real fast just to run it to make sure she starts and is good to go. So that when we bring it outside, we'll be fine. And this is the other tube. This is a slightly different tube. And we'll be putting this one in. Um, in fact, I might want to kind of shove that in there now because this is the correct tube for the back of this guy. So we're going to have to deal with all of that. Um, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it in a little bit. But we're all good there. I also want to put the other carburetor back on that other engine and sort of go outside and sort of set up for tomorrow's, uh, you know, full-on test. But I'm not seeing any leaks here. We probably would have seen it already. All right, we'll be back for the test. And we can see the plug. All right, just to give you an idea of how it's been running. And I ran it for quite some time, but we had to put a little choke on, suggesting that she was running too lean. If I didn't have any choke on, it would fall on its face and stall under load. So it actually is running pretty good. And I cleaned this plug up. It's the original plug that came in it, but um, I cleaned it up. And it was meant chocolate is about what you're looking for. Now, using a choke to tune an engine is not is for testing and to see where you are. Yeah, but uh, nice clean. That's going in. And then after we run it for the day. I'll take it back out and we'll take a peek and see how our tuning is. All right, now on a last note, fellas, just so everybody knows, I want to cover it. These are gasket style plugs, right? They don't have a flange on them, so they have a gasket. And when you tighten it, it's going to feel like the plug is stripping. Believe me, with that many threads, you know, if there's something stripping, yeah, you got problems. You got to compress the gasket. Okay, so I go slow. And I make sure everything is kept straight. You don't want to cock the wrench or anything because you'll crack the porcelain. And just feel it. Yeah, that's tight. All right? Because believe me, if you don't get it tight enough, it won't seal right. The plug will work its way out. That's how you damage threads. 
and it won't run right. Okay, you won't have it sealed properly. All right, we're ready now. All right, it's running really, really good. Now, I know we're not in the light, so we'll come back to this in the, in the shop in a bit. Um, what I am noticing is this is not fitting right. And I noticed it didn't seem like it went down far enough, so we may have to modify it, or we may want to grab the factory one, because when it gets to about here, it like, for some reason or another, at one point when I went to do it, it was kind of like missing, not, yes, yeah, see? There it goes, not hitting the spring. So it's not down far enough. It's not engaging the spring. And although once it's like this, it's fine. But like mid choke or something, it, it kind of like raised up and missed this. There it went again. So we'll get a closer look at that. Uh, I'm going to look at that and then we can put everything back together. But I'm going to continue to use it for the day. Seems to be running real good. I'm going to go put some gas in it and fill it up. Um, and do that at least. It'll be okay for the day, you know. I'd say so far so good. I don't think there's any tuning necessary at this point, but I'll report back later on after a day of using it. And we'll stop in and check on it. All right, so I got through a day of work, but it, it's, it, I got a, we got a problem. So it's the choke blade, it's flapping in the breeze, and it's because the spring isn't holding it. Um, I tried a few different things and tried shortening uh, the length of the barrel, thinking that the, the actuator, that black actuator arm wasn't going deep. No, it's the spring. So it's a manufacturer's defect. Um, and what'll happen is, is the choke will kind of get squirrely and then all of a sudden it'll get loose because it's not detented by the spring. And then the engine at high RPM, you know, when you're washing, will suck the choke blade in, okay? Choking it, gagging it, and gagging on it too much of its own fuels, you'll start blowing out all kind of smoke, and it'll stall. So I managed to get through the day. Let's bring it up on the table. Let's fix that. But I also noticed another problem, so we'll get to that after we resolve this. I'll see you guys in a minute. Just pull you back out. Let that guy up. All right, so now we can see we can see the spring, and it, what's happening is, is it's falling down into the hole. So carefully, let's lift this spring up, because the hole has no bottom. Well, you could just about pick that up, see with your finger. So there's two things going on. The first thing is, is the hole is too big. The second thing is, is well, there's no bottom, so she's going to fall right down. Uh, so my thinking is, is we're going to put a little bit of epoxy and it would be great if I could get enough oh yeah that's fine get enough epoxy in there and try to keep it from falling out so I'm going to use like a five minute epoxy just to try to get enough of it in there and if we can keep it from falling out and then when we go to put this in we want to make sure that okay it stops so I'm holding my stick there so it stops at the bottom of the hole and doesn't go through the other side and that'll give it the elevation that we need all right and now it engages properly so that's really the issue we have here and then after that I have another little trick so let me go mix up a little bit of epoxy do this someplace guys where you're not gonna lose that spring get your magnet out or something um, and the, the more we could create a bottom to that hole in the right location, that's that's really what, what the epoxy really is for. Be back in a minute. All right, let's just take a bit of this epoxy without making too much of a mess. And put some in from the top and try to push it down until it starts to come out the bottom. And you can kind of see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it. Let me get my... No, sorry, but it's a bit of a messy bit of a messy job. I'm going to shove this in there. Oh, see? Oh, yeah, it's coming up. And push that down. That's it. Until it bottoms out against my stick. Now, if you want, you could put a little bit of, you know, glue around the top, but hold on. Now, this is a scribe, and I'm going to just get real close, just in a couple of spots, real close to the spring, 
and then back off a little bit real close to the spring there you go see how it knocked it and we're going to go from the other side they have knocked it back and straightened it and then one from this side here we're going to push it let's see I want to push it more towards where I need it which is here yeah that's good so I want to push it this way more I don't know if you saw that I got you and I got you dialed in close so and yeah that's good oh, we're kind of going the wrong way aren't we ah going the wrong way we're gonna have to take it back out and turn it I think going the wrong way why is it going the wrong way it's doing not what I want it to do it's going in the opposite direction let's just bend it back but it's locked in here we go yeah I can feel it it's locked in all right it's locked in there let's give it a tug yeah she ain't coming out put one over here just these little chicks Okay, and now, and on that cushion, this is the original one. I was messing around with the, I thought maybe the, the hole was not, uh, this hole down here was not drilled enough, but I was wrong. It was, this spring was falling out. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. It's really engaging it. I have to give it a little push, too, to get it down and in. Yeah, that's nice. I'll get you in close. All right, see? Now we can put this back. Make sure it goes in all the way. Yep. Oh, that's nice. And now it's not farting around. It's nice and solid. It's engaged well. It was flapping in the breeze. Let me let me zoom you in a little. You know that's a little bright. Back up a little. And we're going to let that set. Now, it's done. Let me check the recording. And then what we'll do next is, is we're going to put the rest of this on and finish this. And then, uh, but before I do that, I want to, I mentioned to you guys earlier that this was leaking. Okay, this, this uh, cover was leaking. Yes, it is. It, it's leaking. I tried tightening it. That was not enough. So we need to come back so we're going to leave that sit for a little bit I'm going to check um, the material I have over here and this will tell me when everything is drying up and I feel comfortable that it's dry enough right because I can test it all right star date uh, what is it it's 1241 Okay, so it's been some time later because this is a this is like a longer project. So I've been testing it; it's working good. And I mentioned that there is another problem. Now I also mentioned in here that we had a leaky valve cover. I really need to get some gaskets for these things just to keep some around because I have these motors are common, and I got I I have a bunch of them right now, um, still. So yeah, I got quite a number of them. Usually the RTV does it, fellas, and I go to great lengths. Um, but sometimes things can be pesky. So we got one more pesky issue. Valve cover's not leaking anymore. That's all done. I actually like this machine. This is like one of my workhorses. I like the pump. I like the adjustability of the pump. All right. So let me give you the setup. We'll go outside and I'm going to demo, demonstrate it. And then we're going to see if we can fix it. I, you know, I have kind of a solution, but it's not. Like, it's not something you can sell. But it's something. Oh, let me go shut that off. Hold on. That's the air compressor. Hold on. Arch, why don't you shut these things off before you start getting... Listen, fellas, it's busy, it's hot, right? I'm old and cranky. Um, so I'll show you that when I get out there, but just, to, just so that you have a heads up of what you're going to see. So she's running good through the RPM range. Uh, there's a good amount of pressure. There's more pressure than I need. And like I mentioned, I can turn down the pressure with the valve, right? It has that kind of a valving or unloader. And that is so useful. Uh, that is 
to have a really good amount of pressure that I would normally use and then to be able to turn it down. Pump is leaking a little bit. It's got that borked hex, I don't know what it is, it's a fitting. You know, one thing at a time, fellas, we're probably gonna need to rebuild that pump in the future. So when it comes to the motor, everything is going good. She starts right up, she chokes, problem resolved. I've been using it for, with the epoxy on there. I, I've had some great results with epoxy over the years. When done well, I had it on my Nova. I accidentally, when I was porting and polishing the heads, I went a little too far and I went into a water jacket, like years ago, right? And it was freezing out and I had to put heat lamps on it. I did it outside. 25 years went by, sold the car, never leaked, never. I, I even had the heads off. I'm like, should I weld it? Should I, you know, take it to a guy to TIG weld it? You know, nope. So all that's working good. I know it's a pain in the neck, fellas, and a lot of you guys are thinking that's why I don't use these carburetors. I don't blame you, but when there's no budget and you, you know, I'm if I were to sell this thing, <clears throat> if I were to buy an OEM carburetor, well, first of all, who I've seen those screw up. Okay, I have a return policy. Hip, hip will take it back, so that's not an issue. And I think most of us are competent mechanics enough to know how to sort one of these things out. If you don't want to be bothered, don't want to waste your time. I don't blame you. All that's working good. Now, if you kind of go too far on the RPM switch, right? So it's a lever. You pull it over. It pulls on the springs. This is your governor and RPM adjustment from idle and up. The idle isn't great on this thing. It, it idles okay. You can move it through the RPM range. If you Another way to lower the pressure is also lower the RPM. It's easier on the pump, it's easier on the engine. And what I found was, is that if I take that lever and I slam it all the way over to Rabbit, run Rabbit, run, run, you don't wanna run, right? It'll start going, right? And then if I let off the hand, how's that again, Arch? No, fellas, I'm not doing that again, okay? And if you let off the handle, like I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, and then pull the handle in again, it, it'll it'll kick in and it'll be correct. It'll be all right. Um, but that's not a guarantee. That's intermittent. And that's, that's if you were to sell, you're going to tell the customer, see, when it does this, right? Yeah, just, you know, do this for a little while. And it's going to be like, what are you selling me? Right? And even for me, right, using it, like, that's no good. So my thinking is, is I'm going to demonstrate it, then I'm going to take the tank off. Because the only way to really adjust the governor on this is to have the tank off. And then you kind of have to guess... And then you got to put kind of the tank back on. And then this one, it's easy. There's just a couple of bolts. Let us let me show you. And so this is the setup. Let me show you. We're going to look in there and take a guess together as to what, how we could kind of finagle it. I'm not sure. Okay. Try to stay away from adjusting these things. The other solution is you just put a magic marker mark or a paint marker mark and you just stop before it gets the lever gets all the way to the end of its throat. And if you just stop there, I think it's actually set like that. It'll be fine. Okay, as long as that lever doesn't move. I saw one guy, he put a like a sheetrock screw in at one of the machines that I was working on. Like, you know, a self crapper. And just like this is the RPM, it shall always be like this. All right. The, you know, the gods have told me to do this. Right? Because probably a carpenter or whatever, a roofer, something. And it's just like, all right, let's go outside. Let me show you this. Here we have the paint marker. Okay. And then there's a little bit more to go, but this is actually a pretty good RPM, so it might just be that it's out of adjustment. Well, that's what we got to resolve. Let me turn the fuel on. I got fuel in it. This thing is so hard to move. I don't know why that is. This thing sucks. So I got to turn that. And you need a pair of pliers to do it. I don't get it. You know, why that one got so hard, I don't know. I think it's the original switch. Let me get it started, and let me warm it up, and then we'll come back and I'll show you. Um, this, this I believe, is the limiter, okay? So if you were to push it in a little bit more, see how there's a stop there. And that's why I'm thinking I might take, we may take off the, uh, the top, this tank. But I don't, we don't really have to. But I wanted to show you that. If you can see in there... See it? So that's actually the stop. But then there's all these other springs and everything. So I'm thinking, instead of just bending it, why don't we just adjust it and set it up so that we can adjust this thing so that it hits that stop and it won't go any further. But first I want to show you what it does. I think that's all we really need to do. Many of these have a cover that's over here. 
and you'll have to take all that off in order to see this. They generally have this screw, but it's generally not accessible. It's like you set this all up, and then they put all these skirts on it, and, uh, and then that's the end of it. next morning all right fellas it's the next day sorry for a little bit of the noise but it's hot fans are on i just had a shot i like i'll leave the ac on but not shut the windows uh, just to blow some cool air in it, it, sometimes it just gets too hot if the sun is out the roof you know the heat loading is just too much and you know that's gonna happen fellas you know fans wind noise stuff like that i know people hate that and there's ways to filter it out and you know but we uh, we don't, we don't live and work in studio environments. Brought to you by the best sponsor on the planet making us a you know, fortune. Some of us do. So as you can see, that little adjuster uh, does the trick. I had to do it one more time. Um, there is some slight differences, like I said, between the machines. I, I'm not going to call myself um, an expert, right? I have a lot of these machines. Usually I don't have to adjust that, usually. <clears throat> because it's a pretty robust... Um, mechanism that's in there. That's your governor. <clears throat> now let's talk a little bit about that, just real, real quick. I want to cover some bases. So she, I used it the rest of the day. Like I'm shot. I mean, well into you know the evening as I was like, all right, I'm done. Did like four machines or something like that. So after that additional little adjustment, which I did off camera, I think I was at about 3,000 RPMs, and then I can adjust the pressure from there. And I don't know where my adjustment was, adjustment was but it, it, was, it was satisfactory, more than satisfactory for me. In some cases, a little too much pressure. In other cases, not enough, right? So you could be back and forth, or you could just live with a setting that you think is good. So I really like these kinds of machines. They're not professional machines, but they're on the edge, right? They're on that, I, I wanna say them like they're more like a prosumer, like uh, my buddy just picked up his nice machine much better than this this one here. And it's got the cat pump on it, similar to the other ones. Basically the same thing uh, with the Subaru engine. And you know, they, they come in different uh, brand names. Um, so you might say, well, Arch, <clears throat> what's going on there? Well, the governor is trying to do its job and the loading on the pump 
as you spin the pump up faster, and most of these pumps are good to about 3,400 RPMs, right? That doesn't mean you want to always set them there, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. <clears throat> so, um, I like to set some of these motors that are getting older at around 3,000. So that's about what I wound up with. You saw, I think the last measurement was like 31 and change. It went from 32, I think it was higher than that, it came down. So I think it's right within the pocket of, of where I like to have these machines. Um, now, you could try to sort that out. You could bring it up. and you, Well, when you bring it up, right, what's going to happen is it's going to start to, to flutter and stutter. The way around that is, is there's a ton of settings in there, little places to move the springs, to tighten the springs, to loosen the springs. There's little, you know, little micro adjustments you could make. And so you could get, uh, you could theoretically get um, the engine to run at like 3,400 RPMs or you know, maybe a little slightly under just in case. And then adjust the pump pressure through the regulator or the unloader. And this one is more of a fixed version excuse me, an adjustable, the cat, the one that I had at cat is more of a fixed version. So you would have to check all those specs and then you would also need a pressure gauge. And I don't have one. I wanted to buy one a while back, but I just, I don't do enough of these to really make it, uh, you know, a real feature of Arch's garage. <clears throat> and now on the more professional machines, you would want to be an expert in that because these machines are thousands of dollars and they may be running a lot of hose and in some cases on some of the better machines they'll have one you know pumper let's say like they're doing a fire truck and they'll actually have a, a tee it off to a number of other hoses for other workers and so they know all about how many hoses you could put on and what the flow rate is these are these are pumps that have much higher flow rates and i just wanted to cover that real quick because in that environment you're talking about an awful lot of money and you're talking everybody's a professional and and you know full stop you better know what you're doing. You better have all the tools. That's not really the case here. Um, you see, I resurrected this thing. I don't know if I'm going to release the video on going over that motor because I have other motor videos that you know where I've gone over the engines. But this one didn't run. It had gotten water in it. It had some other issues. I'd say overall, the fix for the HIPAA carburetor worked out. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, but it does run well. I now have two HIPAA carburetors, one on each engine. So the one engine's on a machine, the other engine's sitting on the shelf, like I mentioned, and its carburetor's been returned to it, and I'll, I will use it on something. It might even wind up on a mini bike. Um, so I think that kind of covers everything. Around 3,000 RPMs is fine if you're happy with the level of pressure that you're getting. Don't try to like push things too far. You're gonna get a lot more use out of it, and if it's working well for what you're doing, why push it, right? And again, these motors are getting a little bit older at about 3,000 RPMs, 31, 32 maybe max. That, that's way more. Now on a snowblower, these are often used on snowblowers. And one of the things you might want to consider is, uh, is trying to get it as close as possible to the operating RPM, especially if you have, because the impellers on those things, this, the, that stage that throws everything out of the chute, if it doesn't spin fast enough, I'm sure you guys know, um, some machines are kind of plagued with that. And if it's not really spinning fast enough, what you, you got a, a real piece of junk on your hands and you make it a mess and you... you know. So that's a little different situation. Uh, putting a pump on an engine like this, um, you know, a decent pump, like this is the AR pump. Um, I'm very happy with the pump, but that'll really, that'll really test the governor. That'll really test the engine. And go out there on a hot day and run it all day long. I can even tell it's running lean because as I went to go put it away, I could smell it. I didn't bother pulling the plug out of it. I got too tired. I'm shot today. Uh, it's the end of the week. But I can smell it. It's that lean smell. Um, so she's, she ran good. All right. Now it's running good. So hopefully all of that kind of covered enough bases because the video is kind of long now. But this was a lot to go through. It's not worth making a second part on it. I have other sections of, of working on this whole project with the multiple pressure washers. So that's mine now. And I feel confident that I could sell it. I think it's working at a very good RPM, and if the day cometh where I wanted to sell some part of it or whatever, I would sell it. Now, I mentioned also that I like this engine, I like this pump, and I like that platform because I could run this engine, and if I, I have another pump over there that we're waiting to work on, uh, an engine, same basic engine. Um, and I think I just came across something else as well. So if I ever have a pump that I want to test out, I can put that pump on this platform and it will fit. 
uh, this platform in particular gives me plenty of room with the way I remounted the engine. I located everything to where I can get, get at everything, get it apart, put different pumps on, test things out, learn, and see if something is, uh, is in need of more repair or it can be sold or whatever. And you might want to try something like that, fellas, if you come across these. Um, I'm about to work on my sister's pressure washer, and it's decent. It's got a Honda motor on it and all. I forget the branding, but it, you know it's all the same. But it's a vertical. All right, so it's basically a lawnmower engine. It's a Honda lawnmower engine. Uh, it's not like this other little Honda pump that I was, uh, and you know, combo engine and pump combo that I was fooling around with. Um, those, uh, just to get you out of here on this, right? Those, you could try collecting them, but sometimes people want, you know, some money for them, and unless it comes with a wand and a hose and everything else, because most of the time people kill those pumps, and, and pumps are expensive. But these platforms, you could mix and match, and you could generally, when you go to sell it, you'll get a few hundred dollars. So just watch your budget. If you want to keep it, you're going to wind up with uh, what I think is a pretty nice machine, regardless whether it's at the wall or whoever, right? Uh, uh, there's so many different manufacturers, I, I can't even think. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one. That's the end of this particular episode. Uh, shout out to, to HIPAA. Um, for helping us out on this project because there's two carburetors involved and it's unfortunate that one of them didn't work out but uh, it works for me and so it's something to keep your eye out for and I think economically speaking it was definitely in my favor all right thanks for watching this episode of Archer's Garage and you know uh, hit the like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one and leave a comment right you know because I like it when sometimes you guys are like oh you don't know what you're doing yeah see you guys later